Hi everybody, in this video we are going to do Geometry R2, which is trigonometric ratios, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so I have over here um, the original definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now over here, we have the definitions for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant is one over sine. I know since we it starts with the prefix co, it sounds like it should be one over cosine, but no, it says it's one over sine. And that just means that we're going to flip the definition of sine. So that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, right? Because if we do one over sine, then that is one over opposite over hypotenuse, okay, because the definition of sine is just opposite over hypotenuse. But now we can just do keep, change, flip, right? So keep this, change division to multiplication, and then flip this. Oops, hypotenuse. Okay, so if we just do keep, change, flip here, and we would get one times hypotenuse over opposite. Anything times one is itself. So we just end up getting hypotenuse over opposite, okay? And something similar happens for secant, which is one over cosine. The result would be we just get the reciprocal of this. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant, which is one over cosine, is hypotenuse over adjacent. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cotangent, which is one over tangent, is adjacent over opposite. I hope I said all of that right. You can you can go back and let me know if, uh, if at some point in that explanation I said adjacent when I should have said opposite or something. But uh, anyway, so these are the definitions right over here. Um, so let's do this exercise. Find the secant of angle I. Okay, so here's angle I right over here. Let's just remind ourselves what the definition of secant is. Okay, it is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse here is 73. The side which is adjacent to angle I, which is next to it, is this side over here. Okay, technically the hypotenuse is also next to it. It's also adjacent to it, but we don't count, we don't call that the adjacent side. That The hypotenuse is the hypotenuse, and the other side which is adjacent to this angle, we actually call the adjacent side. Okay, the other, the side over here, this side, which is 55 units long, that would be the opposite side, but we don't need that when we're doing secant. Okay, so it would just be hypotenuse over adjacent, so 73 over 48. Okay, um, I don't believe that there's any way to simplify that. Let's see, if, let's see if I'm right. Okay. Find the cotangent of angle A. All right. So here's angle A. The cotangent means the adjacent side over the opposite side. So the this is the hypotenuse over here. The hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. So this angle is 90 degrees, right? Like a square. You have the square symbol there. So the side which is opposite the, the right angle, the 90 degree angle, is the hypotenuse, okay? Um, so the hypotenuse is adjacent to angle A, but we don't consider that the adjacent side. This side over here is the adjacent side, okay? And then the opposite side would be this side, which is 35 units long. So for cotangent, we're doing adjacent over opposite. So 12 over 35. Uh, and is there a way to simplify this? Let's see. The factors of 35, other than 1 and 35, are just 5 and 7. Uh, 5 and 7 are not factors of 12. 
So there's no way to simplify this. So we're just going to write 12 over 35 here. Okay, copy this down on a piece of paper. Really for this exercise, you just need these. Um, so copy, copy the whole thing or just copy these onto a piece of paper if you want. Um, and then this, the exercise is really not that, not that tough. Okay, cotangent of angle J. Again, we want adjacent over opposite for cotangent. So that would be 54 over 72. Uh, that I believe we can simplify. Let's see, both of these are divisible by nine, right? They're also divisible by three. You could divide them by three first. If you don't know what the greatest common factor is off the top of your head, you could just divide them by a factor, by any number which is, which goes into the numerator and also goes into the denominator, and then just simplify again. Okay, but the greatest common factor here is nine. Oh wait, no. Oh, I'm wrong. Oh, never mind. So anyway, the greatest common factor is not nine. So we're gonna simplify. I'm gonna simplify here, and then I'm gonna simplify again. So 54 divided by nine is six. 72 divided by nine is eight. And then I could just simplify again. Actually, I'm glad that that happened because it shows you just gives you an example of. Simplifying and then simplifying again. Um, so both of these numbers are divisible by uh, two. Six divided by two is three and eight divided by two is four. Okay, so we get three fourths uh, as our simplified answer. So another way that we could have gotten that if I had noticed, which I didn't, that the greatest common factor of these two numbers is actually 18 then we could have done it that way. 54 over 72, if we divide the numerator and the denominator by 18, then we would get three fourths, okay? And I didn't, I actually did not know off the top of my head that the greatest common factor um, of these two numbers is 18. How do I know that now? Because nine times two is 18. So if you just keep simplifying in this way, and then multiply the numbers that you divided by, then that would give you the greatest common factor. So you don't actually have to know the greatest common factor off the top of your head. Um, I just divided the numerator and the denominator here by nine and then by two. If I had realized that the greatest common factor was 18, which is nine times two, then I could have done that to begin with. Okay, let me, let me move on. I think I explained that enough. Um, find the cotangent of angle F. Again, we're going to do uh, adjacent over opposite for cotangent. So the adjacent side is this square root of 19 here. The opposite side is 6. Okay, now they want it to be in simplified rationalized form. If there is a square root symbol in the denominator, then that would, well, the square root of a number which is not a perfect square. If we had something like that in the denominator, then it would not be rationalized because if we had something like, let's say the square root of six in the denominator, that would not be rationalized because the square root of six is not a rational number. Okay, so to rationalize the fraction, we want to have a rational number in the denominator. But for this problem, we didn't have the square root of six. We just had six, which is a perfectly good rational number. So we can just type that in uh, as our answer, the square root of 19 over six. Okay. Find the secant of angle R. Here's angle R over here. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. The hypotenuse, which is the side which is opposite the right angle, is 34. Remember, we're doing secant right now. So I want hypotenuse over the adjacent side. Okay, this would be the adjacent side, which it's not, and it's not telling us what that is. So we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem for this problem. Okay, so hopefully you remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
Okay, it doesn't matter which leg you call A and which leg you call B, but C is always the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna plug 34 in for the hypotenuse. Don't forget the exponent. And then let's just call this A and we'll call this B. So B is what we're looking for here. Okay, and then we have 30 squared is 900. Thirty-four squared is one thousand one hundred fifty-six. Okay, subtract nine hundred from both sides. We get B squared equals two hundred fifty-six. Okay, and then we're looking for the square root of two hundred fifty-six. Okay, which is 16. So B is equal to 16. All right, so let's put a 16 over here. And now we know the adjacent side is 16. So let's put that in the denominator over here. Now we have hypotenuse over adjacent. And then we can simplify this. Um, let me write it over here because I kind of ran out of space. These are both divisible by two. Go to 17 here and an 8 here. Okay, that's as far as I can go with simplifying them. Because 17 is a prime number. Okay, and uh, so let's just put 17 over here and 8 here. Find the cosecant of angle D. Okay, so for cosecant, we're doing hypotenuse over opposite. Angle D. Okay, so the hypotenuse is two times the square root of 13, right? The hypotenuse is just opposite the right angle. So that's this one. And then the opposite side, opposite angle D is two times the square root of five. Okay, so automatically the twos cancel. And then if I wanna rationalize the denominator here because this is not a rational number. The square root of five is not rational. But what we could do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of five. Okay, the square root of five times the square root of five is five. Why is that? Because the square root of five by definition means the number that we need to multiply with itself in order to get five. But we are multiplying that number with itself. We're multiplying it with itself right over here. So we should get five, right? If I take this number and I multiply it with itself, by definition, I'm gonna get five. So since I am doing that, I'm gonna get five. All right, and then over here, we have the square root of 13 times the square root of five. So let's remind ourselves of one of the laws of exponents over here. So if I have, let's say, a to, you know what, let me use, let me use real numbers, uh, at, at least for the exponents. Let's say I had a to the third power times b to the third power. Then that would be a times a times a times b times b times b. Okay, now another way of writing that, since all of these are getting multiplied together, I could use the commutative property and rewrite all of this as a times b times a times b times a times b. Okay, so I still have three a's and, and three b's. I'm just, I've just rearranged them. So I have a times b times another a times b times another a times b. So this is really a times b to the third power. Okay, so if in general, if I have a, a, so a to some exponent times another number to the same exponent is equal to these two bases multiplied together all raised to that exponent. And it works backwards also. So if I had started with this, 
then I could sort of split it up and write it this way. Um, so we do have something uh, similar going on here because the square root of 13, well, the, the square root, taking the square root is the same thing as uh, raising something to the power of one half. Okay, so that would take another video to explain why uh, that why it's defined that way. It's not something which seems obvious when you first look at it, but there's a good reason why uh, why fractional exponents have been defined in that way. But for now, just take my word for it. And it does follow uh, these same rules over here. So 13 to the one half times five to the one half is the same as 13 times five, all raised to the power of one half. Okay, but now let's just write that instead of writing the exponent of one half, let's just uh, rewrite that using the square root symbol. Okay, so we have the square root of 13 times five all over five and 13 times five is 65. So we have over here the square root of 65 over five and that should be the final answer. Don't forget to hit the square root symbol there and then over five. Okay, I'm so glad I got that because if I had done some silly mistake somewhere and had to go back to the beginning and explain all that over again, that would have been annoying. Okay, let's do the next problem. Okay, so I'm up to 76 already, that's not bad. Okay, the cosecant of angle V. Where's angle V? Angle V is over here. Cosecant, me oops. cosecant means hypotenuse over opposite. So I want the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, which is this side. So the hypotenuse in the numerator, the opposite side, so opposite from angle V, that would be this angle, this side over here. So two over the square root of, uh, sorry, two times the square root of seven in the denominator. Okay, now these cancel out and actually, this would be the same as you could you could solve this problem the same way that we solved the last one um but you could also think of it this way um if we have let, let's do the same example but this very similar example that i did the last time but uh as a fraction so a to the third power so so some number to the third power over some other number to the third power, okay? That is the same as a times a times a over b times b times b, but this is the same as a over b times a over b times a over b, right? If we just multiply three fractions together like this, then the numerator would be just the numerator over here would be just these three numerators multiplied together, which is what we have here. And again, if we just multiply three fractions like this, the denominator of the answer, so I'm going from right to left here, the denominator of the answer would just be these three denominators multiplied together. And that's what we have over here. Um, so I went, so we sort of went backwards. We, instead of taking three fractions and multiplying them together to get this, we had this and then we sort of split it up into three fractions. But then we could rewrite this as a over b to the third power, because that's exactly what it is. It's just a over b times a over b times a over b. Okay, so again, in general, if we have something like this, then this would be the same thing as this. Okay, and it goes the other way as well. So if we start with something that looks like this, then we could make it look like that. Um, right now, what we have over here, this is like 14 to the power of one half over seven to the power of one half. Okay, so we have something which looks like this side where we have some base raised to a power and then in the denominator, we have a different base but raised to the same power. Both of these are being raised to the power of one half. So this is the same as 14 
over seven, right? Just put one base over the other, put the numerator over the denominator, all raised to the power of one half. So 14 divided by seven is two. So we're gonna get two to the power of one half here, but that's the same thing as the square root of two. Okay, and that's that's by definition, that would require another video to understand why um, fractional exponents have been defined in this way. But just take for my take it my word for it right now um, that taking the square root of two or any number, taking the square root of something is considered to be the same thing as uh, raising it to the power of one half. So the answer here is going to be the square root of two. Okay, find the cotangent of angle W. Here's angle W. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So the adjacent side is six. The opposite side is six over, uh, I keep saying over when I don't mean to. The opposite side is six times the square root of three. Okay, so these are going to cancel. Now, if these cancel, then what do we put in the numerator? It looks like there's nothing left in the numerator. But let me go back a step. Hopefully you agree with me that six is the same thing as six times one. So I can just put a times one in here and I'm not changing the value. And now when these sixes cancel, now that I actually have something here, so I'm not confused anymore. I know what to put in the numerator. I'll put that one. Okay, and then in the, the denominator, we have the square root of three. We want to rationalize the denominator. So we will multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of three, the numerator and denominator. Okay, so one times the square root of three, anything times one is just itself. So that's just gonna be the square root of three over here. And then down here, we have the square root of three times the square root of three, which is just three. Okay, so we're going to, so that's our final answer there, the square root of three over three. Okay, are we getting anything different here? Let me, let me move on. Okay, this is, this is another problem where I guess, yes, where we need to do the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do another problem like that, doing a, the Pythagorean theorem. For cotangent, we need the adjacent side over the opposite side. So I know what, and we're looking at angle S over here. So here's angle S. The adjacent side is the square root of 22. Okay. So, so far, so good. The opposite side, however, is not given to us. We don't know what this is. They didn't tell us. So that's something which we're gonna have to figure out using the Pythagorean theorem again. So let's write the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, and remember the C is always the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is two times the square root of 22. So over here we have two times the square root of 22, and all of this is it is getting squared. Don't forget this exponent over here. Okay, so and let's just call this one A. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll call this side A. So now I have the square root of 22, but don't forget there's an exponent over here also. So that I have to square the square root of 22. Okay, plus b squared. b is what we're looking for. b is this side over here. You know what? Let me just erase this and call it b. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now, the, this kind of looks messy, but it's actually not that hard. Um, the square root of 22 squared is just 22 because the square root of 22 to the second power just means the square root of 22 times the square root of 22. The square root of 22 by definition means the number that we need to multiply with itself in order to get 22. So if we multiply this number with itself, then we'll get 22. Okay, so this is just 22. So we have 22 plus b squared equals, um, this is also 
not too bad. If you remember what we were saying earlier, that if we have some number to some exponent, um, actually, you know what? Well, yeah, this is how we wrote it before. And then I told you that it goes the other way also. So if we start with something that looks like this, we could kind of break it up into the a to the c times b to the c. That's what we have over here. Our, uh, you know, yeah, I should probably use different letters, not a and b, since those are the letters I'm using in the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call these x. You know what? Let's change the c also. Okay, let's... Same thing, I'm just changing the letters around because I don't want you to get them confused with these letters that I have here in the Pythagorean theorem. But if I have some base x to the z power, and then I multiply that by another base y to the z power, then that's the same thing as x times y all raised to the z power, okay? So in this example, my x is 2, my y is the square root of 22, and that's all being raised to the power of 2. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 2 times the square root of 22 to the power of 2, right? So I started with something like this, and then I rewrote it to look more like this, all right? But this 2 times 2 to the second power just means 2 times 2, which is 4. And we already said the square root of 22 to the second power means the square root of 22 times the square root of 22, which is just 22. Okay, so after all that, we have 22 plus b squared equals 4 times 22. 4 times 22 is 88. Okay, so we get 22 plus b squared. Let's subtract 22 from both sides here. We get b squared equals 66, and then, uh, so b is going to be the square root of 66. Okay, so that's what's, what we're going to put in the denominator over here. All right, now I'm going to erase all of this just so I have space. Let me just erase this part. I'll keep the rest of it on the screen in case you want to still, still look at it. Okay, remember what we said earlier, we had we had a problem similar to this earlier. And we said if, if this is, if we're taking the square root of this and we're taking the square root of this, we're taking the square root of the numerator and the denominator, um, then that's the, that's the same, well, let me start again. So this is the same thing as 22 to the power of one half. This is the same thing as 66 to the power of one half. And this is the same thing as 22 over 66 to the power of one half. Okay, so we're taking the square root of all of that. Um, do we really have to go through the whole process of rewriting this as a fraction, and then in the end, um, we're gonna rewrite it again as a square root symbol? No, you don't really have to do that. You could just write it this way. So over here, I could have just said, okay, this is the same thing as the square root of 22 over 66. And maybe that's just a little bit easier to write. Okay, so 22 over 66, we can simplify. Um, both of these numbers are divisible by 22. If we divide the numerator and the denominator by 22 here, then the new numerator would be um, one and the new denominator would be three. So I don't believe that they're going to accept if we were to write it this way, one over the square root of three. If we do the square root of one third like that, I don't, I don't know if they're going to accept that actually. Um, so before I hit enter over here, we could just write this in a different way. So we could write this as the square root of one over the square root of three, okay? And then the square root of one is just one, okay? The number that, the square root of one means the number that we need to multiply with itself to get one. Well, one times one is one. So the square root of one is just one. And then, so we have one over the square root of three here. In order to rationalize this denominator, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of three, okay? 
So one times the square root of three is just the square root of three. The square root of three times the square root of three is three. Okay, so I know that IXL will accept this answer. I don't think they're going to accept the square root of one over three. Um, probably wouldn't, they probably want a, yeah, they probably want it in this form. So let's, you know what, let's, oh, I just want to hit submit, see if they accept it. I don't think they will, no. The, the square root of three over three. Yeah, that's the way that they want you to write it. Okay. All right, find the cotangent of the of angle C. Um, actually, you know what? I have to. I think this is. You know what? I'll I'll do this problem. I need to teach class right now. I have a class coming up in a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video, and then come back, and you'll see that this time I will have moved forward in time. Okay, here I am speaking to you from the future. I left you at 1.13. It is now 2.39. Does that mean that I actually traveled through time? Yes. Yes, it does. All right. And now let's do this problem. Find the cotangent of angle C. Um, so this is another problem where we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll try to go through it quickly because I think we've seen problems similar to this and then after this I'll probably skip a level. Um, so here is angle C. Cotangent means adjacent over opposite. So the adjacent side, well we don't know what the adjacent side is. Let's put a question mark there. The opposite side is 7, oops, 7 times the square root of three. That's this side over here. Okay, um, so we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this side is. So let's write a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The hypotenuse is this side over here, which is opposite the right angle. So let's plug 14 in for c. Don't forget the exponent. And then we have a squared plus seven times the square root of three squared equals 14 squared. Okay, so that's gonna give us a squared plus, so this is like seven squared times the square root of three squared. So seven squared is 49, seven times seven, and the square root of three squared is three. Okay, and then, Okay, I'm going to finish the problem on this background because I just made a silly mistake. Um, and I wrote that 14 squared was 169 instead of 196. So I got that question wrong in the end. So I'm going, I'm backing up and I'm doing it again from this part. Um, 14 squared is 196, not 169. And so a squared plus 49 times three is 147 equals 196. <clears throat> Let's subtract 147 from both sides. We get a squared equals, let's see, can't take seven away from six, bar from the nine, becomes an eight, put a one over here. It's a nine, that's a four. Okay, so a squared is 49. So a is the square root of 49, which is seven. Okay, that makes sense, because seven to the second power is 49, right? So a is seven. So the picture that we had, which looked like this, was uh, seven times the square root of three over here. This is what we were looking for. We just figured out that it's seven, and then we had a 14 over here. We were looking for the cotangent of this angle, which was adjacent over opposite. So now we know that this is seven. So seven in the numerator, and then seven times the square root of three in the denominator, this we can just multiply by one because multiplying something by one doesn't change it. And now when we cancel the sevens out, there's still going to be that one there. So this is equal to one over the square root of three. And then we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of three. Okay, in the numerator, we have one times the square root of three is the square root of three. I think we did problems like this. And the square root of three times the square root of three is three. So that would be our final answer there. 
That's what I should have written a moment ago, but I got it wrong because I made a silly mistake. So silly mistakes are okay, but if you do make a mistake, then please read through the explanation so you can see what you did wrong, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and I think I'm just going to, so this is cosecant, so this would be hypotenuse over opposite. I, I'm just gonna skip ahead to the next level now. Actually, we were further than this. We were at 76 before. Okay. Um, this one, cosecant of angle S. So cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Oh, this is a very easy one. Okay, the cosecant of angle S just means the hypotenuse, which is 20, over the opposite side. Oh, whoops, I was thinking the adjacent side. See, that's what happens when you go too fast, is you start making silly mistakes. So that the hypotenuse, which is 20, over the opposite side, which is 10 times the square root of 3. So we can simplify this. Um, 20 divided by 10 is 2. So this whole thing is the same thing as 2 over the square root of 3. And then we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3 to rationalize that denominator. Now we have the square root of three times the square root of three, which is three, we've done that before. And then in the numerator here, we have two times the square root of three. I think it will let me just write the answer like that. So I'll put two, then I'll put the square root of three, and then in the denominator, we have three. Okay, good. All right, the cotangent of Q. All right, so this is another one uh, for cotangent, we're going to need to do adjacent over opposite. This is another one where we would need to use the Pythagorean theorem first. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The hypotenuse is 10. It doesn't matter if we call this A or B. I'll just call it A. So I have 5 squared plus B squared, so I'm calling this B. All right, so this is 25 plus b squared equals 100. Subtract 25 from both sides. b squared equals 75. And then we have b is the square root of 75. Okay, so over here we have the square root of 75. And we are doing what? We're doing cotangent. So adjacent over opposite. So the adjacent side to angle Q is the square root of 75. The opposite side is five. Okay, and that, that should be it. Okay, the denominator is a rational number. It's not the square root of five, it's just five, so that's fine. Oh, they wanted us to simplify this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. So over here, we could have simplified that. All right. So we can write 75 as 25 times 3. Okay. 75 is the same as 25 times 3. I, I was thinking that. I don't know why I didn't do anything. Okay, so this is the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Okay, and then that's still just over 5. We haven't done anything to the denominator. So since, since we can break 75 up into two factors and one of them is a perfect square, then when we write it this way, this will just become a whole number. So this is equal to the square root of five, 25 is five. So now we have five times the square root of three over five. Okay, and then the fives cancel. So we get just the square root of three. Alrighty. Oh boy. 
All right, let's see if I can oh, stop making these careless mistakes over here. Okay, the secant of x. Here's angle x. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. The hypotenuse is 2 times the square root of 11. Okay, adjacent side would be 2 times the square root of 3. That's this one over here. These cancel. We can multiply the numerator and denominator here by the square root of 3. And then we would get in here, that's like the square root of 11 times 3 over 3. Okay, and... I hope I'm not making any more careless mistakes here. Okay. Oh my gosh. Now I know how you guys feel. You do so much work, then you get a question wrong, your smart score goes down, and you get upset, right? Okay. Now, now I have some sympathy. Not much. Not much. A little. Okay, because it's good. It's good to practice. You learn from your mistakes. So you know what? It's not that bad. It's not the end of the world. Okay, find the cotangent of angle Q. Here's angle Q. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Whoops, this is the adjacent one. This is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So this is the adjacent one. Okay, so adjacent over the opposite. Okay, that's gonna cancel, that's an easy one. So that's just the square root of three. Okay, let's, you know what, let's skip a level here. Let's see if they give us anything different. The cosecant of angle C. All right, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. We don't know what the hypotenuse is, so let's figure that out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We don't know what the hypotenuse is, so let's just leave that as C squared. The legs are 7 and 7. So we have 7 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. So that's 49 plus 49, which is 98. So we have 98 equals C squared. So C is equal to the square root of 98. So we have the square root of 98 over here. That's the hypotenuse. And what were we looking for? We were looking for the cosecant. So hypotenuse over the opposite. So the square root of 98, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle, over the opposite side, which is 7. Okay, now before I make another careless mistake, let's see if there's any way to um, factor this. So 98... Uh, is divisible by 7, right? 98 divided by 7. Is 14. So we can rewrite this as the square root of 14 times 7. Okay. Is that really going to help us out, though? Well, okay, so what we could do then is write this as the square root of 14 times the square root of 7 over this over 7. Okay, so far we haven't done anything to this 7 in the denominator. Now here's how we could simplify this, though. Uh, 7 is the same thing as the square root of 7 times the square root of 7. I rewrote 7 as the square root of 7 squared, or the square root of 7 times the square root of 7. Now that I've done that, now I can cancel these square roots of 7s out, and then this is just like the square root of 14 over 7, because I have a square root here and I have a square root here, so I can put a square root over the whole thing of 14 over 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2, so we're going to get the square root of 2 here. And that would be the answer in simplified form. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. You saw I fell for it earlier, which was a silly mistake on my part. Um, but if you get if you get a large number underneath uh, the radical over here, see if you can 
if you can rewrite it as two numbers multiplied together and continue simplifying in that way. Sometimes one of those numbers is a perfect square, um, like the one we did earlier where we had the 25 in there. 25 is a perfect square. Sometimes they're not perfect squares, but you could still continue and use one of those numbers to simplify even further. So as I saw there was a seven here and a seven here. So I broke this seven into the square root of seven times the square root of seven. And then this, and then one of those square roots of seven in the denominator canceled with the square root of seven in the numerator. Okay, so we get the square root of two there. That was a good problem. All right. Oh, tangent. Oh, it's actually asking me for tangent now. Okay, so it's a good thing that I wrote these over here. Tangent is, is just opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Okay, so find the tangent of angle A and the cotangent of angle C. All right, so I see what they're doing. Um, these should be the same. Okay, we're going to see that these are going to turn out to be the same. If we have, here's angle A, here's angle C. So the tangent of angle A means the opposite over the adjacent. So it would be this side over this side. Now the cotangent of angle C would be adjacent over opposite. So it would be this side, which is the adjacent side to angle C, over the opposite side, which is this side. So notice that it would be exactly the same thing. The tangent of A is this side over this side. The cotangent of C is also this side over this side. So we're going to get the exact same answer. All right, so let's just, let's just do tangent. Let's look at angle A and we want the opposite side, which is this over the adjacent side, which is this. Okay, um, but we need to use the Pythagorean theorem first to figure out what this side is. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, um, this is a leg. We, we're trying to find one of the legs of this triangle. This is the hypotenuse over here because it's opposite the right angle. So this must be plugged in for C. Don't forget the exponent over there. Okay, and then it doesn't matter if we put this in for A or B. So I'll put it in for B this time. Um, so I have plus nine times the square root of 21 squared, A squared plus this squared equals this squared. Okay. All right, so leave that for a moment, just A squared. So this is like nine to the second power times the square root of 21 to the second power. So nine to the second power is 81, nine times nine. The square root of 21 to the second power is 21. Now over here, we have nine to the second power is 81 again, nine times nine. Now the square root of um, 42 to the second power is 42. Okay. Um, now I'm actually not going to multiply these out right now because you could you could just multiply these out, but I'm gonna use a little bit of, uh, of um, math, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So if we subtract 81 times 21 from both sides, then these cancel out over here. So we get a squared equals, now I can rewrite this as, I can rewrite this 42 as 21 times two, okay? So look what I have here. I have 81 times 21 times two. So really I have two 81 times 21s. And then I'm subtracting one 81 times 21 so I'm going to, if I had two 81 times 21s up here and I subtract one of them, I would still have one left. 
Okay, so I'm still going to get 81 times 21 over here. And then I can take the square root of both sides and I would get A equals the square root of all of this. So the square root of 81 times 21, which I can write as the square root of 81 times the square root of 21. Okay, and the square root of 81 is just nine. So this is equal to, I ran out of room. You know what, I'll write it over here. So this is equal to nine times the square root of 21. Okay, so A, which was this side over here, is nine times the square root of 21. So the tangent of, that was what I called side A. So now I'm looking at this angle A over here. So the tangent of this angle A is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, so this over this. So we have the nine times the square root of 21 over nine times the square root of 21. Oh, look at that. So anything divided by itself is just one. So that simplifies very easily. So this is one, and this is exactly the same thing because the cotangent of C would just be the adjacent side to C, which is this, divided by the opposite side to C, which is this. Okay, so again, we would just get one. Okay. All right, find the cotangent of angle W and the tangent of angle V. Okay, again, they're going to be exactly the same. Um, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side. Uh, let's just call this side A. So A squared plus four times the square root of three squared equals nine squared, okay? Um, that's gonna give me 16 times three equals, uh, yeah, I'll just equals 81. All right, yeah, these numbers are small. If I had not simplified the last question in, in the way that I did, I would have gotten really big numbers. Um, but these numbers are not too big. So if I, I I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply these and it's not gonna be too bad. Okay, so now I have, now let's subtract 48 from both sides. So we get a squared equals, let's see. So 50 to 81 would be 31 plus another two. So 33, right? That's 33, yeah, okay. So if a squared is equal to 33, then a is equal to the square root of 33. So we could break this up into three times 11. Um, which is, yeah, that might actually be useful because I do see a square root of three over here. So let's go ahead and break this 33 up into three times 11. And that'll probably turn out to be good for us in the end. And we can rewrite this as the square root of three times the square root of 11. Okay, um, let's just go with the tangent of angle V. They're gonna be the same anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, Tangent of angle V means the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the opposite side is this, which is four times the square root of three, over the adjacent side, which is this, which we just figured out was the square root of three times the square root of 11. So these square roots of threes are going to cancel. So we, we have left over four over the square root of 11, and now what we can do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 11. And we would get four times the square root of 11 over 11. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure we have seen just about all the tricks um, 
that IXL is going to throw at us for this exercise. So I'm going to end the video there and have a great day.